Did you know creating mixed reality experiences like these is not that difficult? With the launch of MetaQuest Pro and Quest 3, we got to see some really cool mixed reality applications and you can build one too. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to set up your Unity project for mixed reality using Meta's latest SDK and rebuild this amazing and realistic experience you're seeing right now using Meta's presence platform capabilities like scene understanding, depth API, and spatial anchors. These capabilities allow our favorite character Oppy to interact realistically with the physical world and get obscured from the view when it's behind physical objects. If you're wondering, yes, this is the same Oppy from the world beyond, which was Meta's first reference app that showcased their presence platform capabilities. Now, before we get started, I'd like to thank Meta for sponsoring this video and for their support. So to make your life easier, we have already set up a Unity project with the latest Meta SDK, which is version 60, and it has also been set up with all the player settings. Go ahead and download that from the GitHub link in the description below. Once you have the project downloaded, add it to your Unity Hub, and here you will notice that we are using the editor version 2022.3.13 F1 LTS, and that's because later in this video, we'll be using Depth API, which has a minimum requirement of the editor to be of version 2022.3.1, or above. Once you have made sure you're using the right version, you can open this project and I will see you in Unity. Now, the first thing that we want to do here is to switch the platform to Android. So click on File, Build Settings, click on Android and switch the platform. Next, close this window, open the Scenes folder, create a new scene and call it as MR Experience and then double click to open it. To set up our scene for mixed reality, we'll be using Meta's latest tool, Building Blocks. This tool is the reason why we'll be able to build our experience so fast because it is so easy to use. Don't believe me? You will see. To get this tool, you need to click on Oculus, Tools, Building Blocks. This will open a new window which you can dock over here. Now, get rid of the main camera and add the camera rig to your scene by clicking on this button over here. The camera rig comes along with a tracking space with all the components that are required to track your headset and your hands. At this point, if you connect your headset to your laptop using Link or AirLink and press the play button, you will be able to see your default environment. Although your hands are tracked, you'll not be able to see them because we haven't added any visuals to it right now. We'll be doing that later on. Now to create a mixed reality application, there are four major steps. The first step is to enable pass through so that you can see your physical world. And this can be done in a single click. In your building block, search for pass through and click on this button over here. This does two things. First, it adds the OVR pass through layer so that you can see the physical world. And second, it changes the OVR manager settings of the pass through support from none to supported so that this application can use the pass through functionalities. And now if you press play and test it, this time you'll be able to see your physical world. The second step is to enable scene understanding so that the application can access the data of users physical world. This can be done in a single click as well. In your building blocks, search for effect mesh and click on its button. This adds two things. First is the MR utility kit with the MR UK script. This script can be used to query your scene. For example, you can find the number of walls and its position. You can find the position of tables, sofas, or any other objects that has been mapped in a room. Second is the effect mesh. Now this component is responsible for creating and visualizing mesh on top of your real world. This component needs a mesh material that gets applied on the generated mesh. You can set its border size and frame offsets. And then we have an option to add colliders, which we're going to enable right now. And this is how the virtual objects will be able to interact with your physical world. So by adding colliders, it means that it's going to create a collider for each of the generated mesh. And then it has an option to hide the mesh. Right now, we're going to leave it as it is. But later on, before building the application, we're going to hide the mesh so that you can see the physical world as it is. And finally, we have to set the labels. Now this defines as to which scene objects the mesh has to be generated. So if we click on this drop down right now, you can see that the mesh will be generated for all the scene objects. Now, for some reason, if you want to generate mesh just for the floor, you can click on nothing and then select floor. Now, if you want to generate mesh for the floor and the walls, so you can select walls as well. But for now, we'll generate mesh for everything. And finally, we have the MRUK start script. Now, this is a helper class which will be used to initialize the effect mesh. And now there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is to select the camera rig, scroll down till you find the scene support, and we need to change it from none to supported. All right, so now if you save your scene and press play, you'll be able to see all the objects in your room. For example, I have a table here right in front of me. I have two doors, a window, 
and I have a bed here as well. So basically it creates a mesh for all the objects that you have created in your room. Now what if we want to have different materials for different scene objects? That's possible as well. You need to select the effect mesh, duplicate it. We'll call the first one as effect mesh flow and the next one as effect mesh rest. Then select effect mesh flow and change its mesh material to brown door. I know we are using door material for floor, but that's all right. And then you need to scroll down, select the labels, select nothing. And we just want to select the floor. Then select effect mesh rest. And from this labels, we want to uncheck floor. And now if we save your scene and press play, now you will be able to see that your floor is of a different material. There's one important thing that I forgot to mention. When you create various effect mesh, you can see that each of them is getting initialized separately by its own MRUK start method. Now, if your experience has a particular execution order and initialization dependencies, then this is not going to work out too well. So what we need to do is select all the effect mesh and get rid of the MRUK start. Instead, select the MR utility kit, scroll down and inside scene load events we need to create two of them since we have two of them select the effect mesh flow drag and drop it here select the effect mesh rest drag and drop it here and from the functions we need to select effect mesh and click on create mesh same thing for the second one as well now this ensures that everything is going to get executed in order so first the flow is going to get generated and then we have the mesh for the rest of them and then below here whatever you add that is going to get generated next moving on to the third step which is adding interactions and virtual objects here let's begin by adding controllers and hand tracking to our scene and to do that in your building blocks search for controllers and click on its button and search for hand tracking and click on its button as well and in your hierarchy, you can see that it has added left controller, left hand tracking, right controller and right hand tracking. Now you can press play and test it out. Here you can see that your hands are getting tracked and if you grab a controller, it's going to automatically switch to the controller as well, which is pretty cool. To interact with the virtual objects, we also need a hand grab interactor. And to add it, you need to search for grabbable item inside building block and click on its button. Now this creates a separate game object called interactions which if you open it up, you can see that it has left grab and right grab, both with hand grab interactors. Now this also adds a grabbable item which we will not be using, so you can delete it. Now to add virtual objects to your scene, go ahead and download the Unity package that's linked in the description below and import it into Unity. This package has all the visual effects, prefabs, scripts and audio that you will need to create this experience. Before we add anything to our scene, let me explain to you what exactly we are creating. We are building an experience where a random position on your flow is decided as a spawn point and it is at this location that the enemies are going to spawn. Once we have the enemy spawned, it should be able to walk around in your room using nav mesh and also it can be grabbed using our hands. Then we have the OP character which can be controlled using the joystick of our controller and it has the ability to jump over physical objects like tables and sofas. The idea here is to kill all the enemies by making OP jump on top of them just like in Mario. Alright, so in your hierarchy, create an empty game object and call it as enemy spawner and add a component called as find enemy spawn location. Now this component needs a spawn object which you can find under MR assets prefab. So select enemy spawner again and drag and drop coffin inside the spawn object. Now spawn amount is going to be one. We just want to spawn a single coffin and max iteration is the number of times to attempt spawning an object before it gives up. And then we want to spawn the location on top of a surface. Not on everything, we just want to spawn it on top of our floor. And then we want to add a spawn location indicator. So this is the prefab, drag and drop it in here. We need to add a spawn timer, so it's going to be 7 seconds. Next, create another game object in your scene and call it as nav mesh generator. And to this object, add a component called generate nav mesh. Now this adds the nav mesh surface automatically. Here we need to create a new agent type so you can click on this drop down click on open agent settings click on the plus symbol let's call our agent as mummy here set the radius as 0.13 height as 0.58 step height as 0.08 and you can close this tab and from the drop down select mummy then change the use geometry to use physics colliders and scroll down and set the minimum area as 0.5 now since each user's room is different, we have to generate the nav mesh during runtime and this component does exactly that. Now we want to generate the nav mesh only after the room has been initialized. So click on MR utility kit, add an event, drag and drop the nav mesh generator. From the drop down, select nav mesh generator and initialize bounce. Once the nav mesh has been generated, we want to spawn the enemies. So click on the plus symbol here. 
drag and drop enemy spawner and from the drop down we want to select find enemy spawn location and click on spawn coffin point then select the op prefab and bring it to your scene now this character comes along with an animator and custom character controller which needs transform of our center eye so open the camera rig and here we have the center eye anchor select it and drag and drop it inside movement frame of reference and drag and drop it inside the respawn transform as well now there are some more tweaks that we need to do and that is to select the mummy monster prefab and change the agent type from humanoid to mummy now to give you a better understanding let me explain to you what exactly is happening in our scene when the application loads for the first time the mruk script is going to initialize the room and is going to create mesh for all the scene objects that have been mapped once that's done it's going to generate a nav mesh and once we have the nav mesh generated it's going to find a random location on your floor then the enemy spawner script is going to instantiate the spawn location indicator at that point and based on the timer that is set here it's going to start a countdown at the end of the countdown it's going to spawn the coffin object so this is going to get spawned and the spawn location is going to start somewhere from the eye level and then it's going to fall down onto the floor and the doors are going to break open this prefab has a component called as enemy spawner which is responsible for spawning the monster prefab now as you can see here the spawn number is 8 and spawn rate is 5 which means that it's going to generate one monster every five seconds until it has spawned a total of eight monsters now if we check out the mummy prefab it has an animator nav mesh agent box collider rigid body and the grabbable components it also has a monster controller so this is responsible for the overall behavior of the monster wherein it will be able to walk around your floor you can grab it and it also understands that uh, when op has jumped from the top it has to die and play the different particle effects all right so let's get rid of uh, these we just need op now you can save your scene press play and test this out all right so here we have a countdown which is almost getting over and once that's done we'll see the coffin instantiated and fall down here like that and the doors broke open as well and now the monster should be spawning they're spawned actually they're behind it i think you can see them from here like that yeah there you go so now you can see the enemies and now to control our character oppy here which is so cute all you can do is uh, use the joystick and press the a button to make him jump and now to kill the enemies all you need to do is jump on top of them like this now there's one thing that you might notice and that is you can see the character even though it's behind the table which kind of breaks the experience which takes us to a fourth step which is implementing depth api so to import depth api click on the github link that is provided in the description below and that should open this page for you once you are here you can copy the git url go back into unity click on windows package manager click on the plus symbol and click on add package from git url paste the url and click on add now if your project is using universal render pipeline then you need to copy the second git url as well and go back to unity and follow the same step of clicking on this plus symbol add packages from git url paste it over here and click on add once that's done close this in your project window search for environment depth occlusion and make sure the search is selected to all select the prefab and add it to your scene this has two components environment depth texture provider and environment depth occlusion controller the main thing that we need to know here is the occlusion type there are two of them hard occlusion and soft occlusion if we check out their documentation you can see here that hard occlusion is cheaper to compute but has jagged edges as you can see here with the left hand and soft occlusion is visually more appealing but requires more gpu as you can see here with the right hand so going back to unity let's set our occlusion type as soft occlusion because our experience is not graphic intensive now the last step here is to select all the materials of all the virtual objects that would be present in a scene and change its shader so to do that navigate inside assets mr assets models let's start with the coffin model inside textures we have the coffin material select the shader drop down select meta depth BIRP and select occlusion standard then go back inside models select mummy monster select materials select both of them and follow the same procedure of selecting meta depth BIRP and occlusion standard now repeat the same process for our op character as well navigate inside materials select both of them select meta depth BIRP occlusion standard and for the last time navigate inside assets hall studio effect pack materials select all the materials but this time we need to select shader meta depth birp and select occlusion particle standard and lit now this is different because all these materials are used for particle effects 
Now going back to the documentation, here you can see that Depth API has several requirements such as setting the graphics API to Vulkan, having the studio rendering mode set to multi-view and other stuff like that. You know what's the best part? You don't have to do any of this. Going back to Unity, on the bottom right corner you can click on the Oculus symbol, click on Project Setup tool and here it will show you all the setup that has to be done and within a single click it's gonna set up everything for you. And then close this window, select effect mesh flow, effect mesh rest and hide the mesh. Save your scene, press play and test it out. So here we have the same scene but with depth API in action. So if I put my hand behind, there's nothing. But if I put my hand in front of Oppy, you can see that it's getting occluded which makes this so much more realistic. Also, if you grab an enemy and place it behind an object like this, it completely disappears which is so cool. While testing it, I noticed that we had two errors saying that the hand grab visuals were not referenced. So to reference it, click on building blocks, search for synthetic hand, click on the button and then select the hand grab visual under left hand, select synthetic left hand, drag and drop it inside here. Same thing for the right hand as well. So open right hand grab, open visual and here we have the hand grab visual. Select the synthetic right hand, drag and drop it in here. Now you can save your scene. Then go to file, build settings, add the open scene, click on build and run. Let's create a new folder called as builds. Name our application as mixed reality experience and click on save. Now this will build the application on your headset. I will see you once that's done. So here's the final build and everything is working perfectly fine. It's really fun to see Oppie interacting with the physical world and jumping on top of enemies to kill them. The depth API is working so well that I almost missed a hidden monster behind the sofa. Alright, so was that not easy? I've been using Meta SDK since the time it was called Oculus SDK. And trust me, Meta's presence platform has made our life so much easier. Generally, it would have taken us a few days to build a mixed reality experience. But with Meta's SDK and presence platform, I was able to build this in a couple of hours and you can do it too. So what are the next steps? You can go through the scripts and try to understand how it is working. You can build on top of that and make a complete game cycle. If you manage to do that, you'll be one of the top 1% of developers who would have created a mixed reality game. And don't forget to share it with us on LinkedIn and Discord. And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.